Hello, my name is Katherine Alban. I am a nurse student from the accelerated program of Fairfield University. I am here to talk to you about healthy ingredient swaps. Discover good for you ingredient substitutions that will preserve the deliciousness of your favorite recipes. These slides were created by the Kentucky Inclusive Health Collaborative at the University of Kentucky Human Development Institute in collaboration with Armark and the American Heart Association as part of the Healthy for Life initiative. Our agenda for today is the introduction, healthy swap tips, healthy ingredients, swap activity, creamy spinach feta dip recipe, and goal setting. Our learning objectives are to identify and choose healthy ingredients and snack substitutions, create a healthier version of a dip recipe using tasty substitutions. For our icebreaker, I want you to take a moment and uh, reflect and think a little bit about what is preventing you from reaching your goal of having a healthy lifestyle. Perhaps you don't have the, um, the information, you think it's, it is so hard to do these changes, but in this presentation, I'm going to provide you with the tools and with information that might break those um, barriers away and put you closer to your healthy goals. So let's get started. I'm going to share a video with you that teaches you about the ingredient swaps, which are an easy way to improve a healthfulness of meals. So let's check out some simple ways and simple ideas that won't cut down on the great taste. Follow these healthy guidelines to update your eating style and improve your nutrition profile. Cut down on saturated and trans fats by choosing non-tropical vegetable oils like monosaturated and polyunsaturated oils. Buy lower sodium versions. If you can't find lower sodium or no salt added, rinse the contents in a colander underwater to wash away some of the salt. Choose canned fruits packed in juice rather than syrup. Use non-stick cooking spray instead of greasing bakeware with butter or shortening, and use it in skillets instead of butter for cooking. Make your own salad dressings by mixing healthier kitchen oils, such as olive oil, with vinegar and herbs. The general rule for a homemade dressing is one-third acid, vinegar or citrus juice, to two-thirds cup of oil. Look for whole grains and lower sodium when you buy things like bread, pasta, crackers, and snacks. Choose poultry and fish and limit red meat. Always look for leaner pieces and trim away skin and visible fat before cooking. Finally, here are a few examples of some simple swaps that you can try. Whole wheat flour for white flour. For every cup of white flour your recipe calls for, substitute 7 8 cup of whole wheat. Unsweetened applesauce for oil or butter. If your recipe calls for one cup of oil, substitute a half cup of unsweetened applesauce and a half cup of oil. Vanilla for sugar. Cutting sugar in half and adding a teaspoon of vanilla adds a lot of flavor with significantly fewer calories. Mashed bananas for butter or oil. One cup of mashed bananas in place of one cup of butter or oil. Control what goes into your body. Healthy home cooking and smart shopping puts you in control of what goes into your recipes and your body. So swapping in healthier alternatives for common ingredients can make some of your family favorites more nutritious yet still delicious. You can cut down on saturated and trans fats, which are bad for your heart by choosing non-tropical vegetable oils, such as canola, corn, or olive. Use these oils instead of ingredients high in saturated fats, such as butter, lard, hard stick margarine, or tropical oils. Eat more foods like avocados and nut butters, which have good fat, and salmon and sunflower seeds, which have good fat as well. 
by no salt added or low sodium versions of canned vegetables and beans. If you can find them, rinse and drain regular canned vegetables and beans in a colander and to get rid of excess sodium. Choose unsweetened frozen fruits. Choose canned fruits packed in water or their own juice rather than syrup. Instead of greasing bakeware with butter or shortening, lightly spread it with a cooking spray made with non-tropical oils, such as olive oil. And use one to two teaspoons of non-tropical oil in skillets instead of melting butter for cooking. Make your own salad dressing by mixing a healthier oil, such as olive oil, with vinegar and herbs. The general rule for a homemade dressing is one third acid vinegar or citrus to two third oils. Look for a whole grains and the lowest sodium available products when you buy things like bread, pasta, crackers, and snacks. Here are a few examples of some simple swaps you can try. Whole wheat flour and white flour. For, a, for every cup of white flour, substitute seven eight cups whole wheat flour. Choose skimmed poultry and non-fried fish and limit red meal. Limit red meats. Always look for linear cuts and trim away all visible fat before cooking. Unsweetened applesauce for butter. If your recipe calls for one cup of butter, substitute half cup of unsweetened applesauce and half cup of a non-tropical oil. You can even swap in an applesauce for some of the sugar in cookies, muffins, and pancakes. Yummy. Vanilla extract for sugar is another good alternative. Cutting sugar in half and adding a teaspoon of vanilla extract adds a lot of flavor with significantly fewer calories. Try mashed banana instead of butter or oil. Use one cup of mashed banana in place of one cup of butter or oil. You can make an easy chocolate pudding using an avocado, banana, and a dash of unsweetened cocoa powder. All of these preserve the deliciousness of your recipes while creating a healthier and more nutritious finished product. Next, we're going to see a video for creamy spinach feta dip. There. Today I'm making creamy spinach feta dip. This recipe is almost guaranteed to make any spinach disliker change his or her mind for sure. Now vegetable dips sure sound healthy, but often they are loaded with fat and calories. But the version I'm showing you is not only heart healthy, but mighty tasty too. So we'll start out with our spinach. I have a 10 and a half ounce package of chopped frozen spinach that I've already cooked by following the directions on the box. Now I've put it in this colander in the sink. I'm going to press it with this fork like so. Make sure it drains any excess water. Cooked spinach holds a lot of water. So you have to put in some muscle work to get as much of that water out as you can. Sometimes I'll even squeeze it with my hands. Okay, well that should do it. So that goes into my mixing bowl here. Next, I'm adding half a cup of fat-free plain yogurt. Half a cup of reduced fat sour cream. And 
half a cup of fat-free feta cheese crumbles. Feta cheese is a Greek cheese that adds a little tang to this dip. This is where we're saving a lot of calories by using reduced fat and fat-free dairy products. Now, I'll add one teaspoon of minced garlic from a jar. That's one clove if you're mincing it yourself. Next, I'm adding two teaspoons of dried parsley, or you could use dried dill instead. If you have fresh herbs on hand, use one third of a cup of chopped flat leaf parsley or fresh dill. And lastly, I am adding in half a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, now I'm mixing it all together with a wooden spoon until the spinach is broken up and mixed in really well with all the other ingredients until it looks like this. Well, that should do it. All right. Now I'm going to cover the bowl with plastic wrap or you could use a plate. I'll put it in the refrigerator to give it time to chill and for all the flavors to melt together. I'll keep it in there for at least an hour or so. Mm, now here's our finished creamy spinach feta dip, all chilled and ready to serve. I have it here with some whole wheat pita wedges and baby carrots for dipping. You could serve it with any type of raw veggie that you like. A great recipe for the whole family to snack on. So enjoy. I will. Now we're going to move to our fun activity of um, healthy ingredient swap. So let's start. And let's choose on our left side, we have the not so healthy options. And then on the right side, we have our substitutions of healthier versions. So white flour can be substituted with, and we look in here, whole wheat flour. Next, we have canned fruit in syrup, which can be substituted with, do you remember? Canned fruit in 100% juice or water. Good job. Okay, eggs can be substituted with one quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce or one tablespoon of uh, baking soda. Canned veggies and beans can be swapped with no salt added or low sodium veggies or beans. Sugar can be substituted with you guys remember banana extract. And then frozen fruit can be substituted with, so this frozen fruit has sugar added and we can substitute it with unfrozen, uh, frozen, unsweetened frozen fruit. Fried chicken can be substituted with real skinless chicken and we got a hundred, yay. Okay. Moving on, we're going to do our own creamy spinach feta dip. So I'm gonna tell you the ingredients and I'm gonna leave this in your um, screens so you can take it, uh, a look of the things that we need. We're gonna need um, 10 ounce package of frozen chopped spinach. But if you don't find the frozen, I'm going to be using fresh spinach and I just um, steam it um, and use it as well. Um, we can use half cup of fat free yogurt, plain yogurt, one half cup of um, low fat sour cream, one third cup of chopped fresh parsley or dill or two tablespoons or um, dry parsley or dills. We have a half cup of fat-free feta cheese, six whole grain pitas, half tablespoon black pepper, and one teaspoon mice um, garlic, okay? So once you have all the ingredients, oh, yep. let's move on and um, let's do some cooking. Oh, 
Okay. Now is our turn, our time to do the cooking part. Uh, we have the spinach that was already cooked. I have the 10 ounces in here. So I'm going to put everything on my food processor. So we have spinach. We're going to add the yogurt, half cup. We have the fat cheese. We have the sour cream. With everything to the you can use if you don't have a food processor, you can use um you can use also a blender, okay? We have, I'm going to use dill. So I use two tablespoons of the dill. Half tablespoon of the um, pepper, black pepper. And the garlic. Okay. And we're going to process it for about 10 seconds. We'll see what comes from you after. Okay. And it is all done. I have here, it's more creamy and it has, I, if you see it right here, there is no, um, it, must, it has the texture of hummus um, because I did it on the blender on, on the food processor. And if you do it on the blender, probably it's going to be the same thing. But let's taste it. And I'm using um, almond crackers because I couldn't find um, the pita bread. So I'm switching a little bit, but I'm using almond crackers, which are really good for you. It's a good substitution of like normal crackers. And it's really, really good. Okay. Now that we have created our um, delicious feta dip uh, with the spinach, let's move on to the sweet side of the swaps. So life is sweet with these easy sugar swaps. We can change baking soda and cooking, <clears throat> baking and cooking with excuse me, with unsweetened applesauce, can, unsweetened applesauce can substitute for some of the sugar in a recipe. You may need less oil too. So adjust the recipe as needed to get the taste and texture you like. Or try using a no calorie sweetener suitable for cooking and baking. Dressings and sauces have a lot of sugar as well. So instead of buying um, these um, things like uh, ketchup, tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, or salad dressings, you can um, do your own versions of homemade versions. Um, and so you can control the amount of sugar that is added to them. Soda versus uh, soft drinks. So swap sugar uh, sweetened beverage for plain or sparkling water flavor with mints, citrus, cucumber, or a splash of 100% fruit juice. Desserts and sweets. So instead of indulging in a traditional sugar-based dessert, enjoy the natural sweetness of fruit. Fresh or frozen or canned, um, if they're on their own juice or water, are all good choices. Try them bake, real, sweeten, or poach. My favorite personally are frozen blueberries. Snack mix and granola. Make your own without all the added sugars. Combine your favorite nuts and seeds that are either 
unsalted or very slightly salted. Raisins and dry fruits that are unsweetened. Raw oats and whole grain cereal, non-sugar or non-frosted. And you can skip the candy. Tea and coffee, cut back on sugars, including honey and agave syrup. Gradually until your taste adjusts to less sweetness. Try adding natural flavors like cinnamon, citrus, mints, and nutmeg. If you want to get more recipes, you can go to heart.org slash recipes. Food textures are a big role in whether we like or dislike certain foods. So for example, while you may not like mushy canned pins, you may be surprised that you end up loving um, freshly or barely cook, cooked peas. Um, luckily, eating healthy includes foods with all sorts of textures and flavors. So here are some uh, nutritious snack suggestions for those times that you have cravings um, and want something a little bit different and don't want to follow a recipe. So you can substitute um, ice cream, the, cream, the creaminess of ice cream for fresh avocado. You can um, also do um, just either eat it on a, on a piece of toast or a piece of whole, whole grain bread or you can also eat it with um, just the avocado itself with a spoon. Um, you can warm one tablespoon of creamy peanut butter in the microwave for 10 seconds and drizzle it all over in half cup of low fat non-sugar added frozen yogurt. You can puree some berries and swirl them into a cup of low fat yogurt with no sugar added. Um, if you're um, craving for something crunchy, you can, um, instead of eating pretzels and chips that um, are loaded with lots of sodium and extra calories, you can um, try unsalted nuts, crunchy nuts. You can try uh, crisp bread, whole crisp bread. You can um, make uh, whole grain pita triangles. You can eat plain popcorn and, and just add a little bit of like flavor. You can add a little bit of um, thyme or herbs to it. Um, if, you, if you like the sweet uh, side of the popcorn, you can add a little bit of cinnamon to give it a little bit of sweeter uh, flavor. Apples are great. If you want the crunchy ones, you can um, try to look for like uh, Chris, Fudgy, or Gala, those are the nice crispy um, apples. Um, if you want something liquid, instead of drinking sweet tea or soda, you can um, get some water, like as, 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 um, you can get some uh, sprinkled water with um, some um, berries in it, lemon juice. And if you want that squishy jelly-like candies, you can just um, use uh, either fresh or um, frozen uh, fruits like um, grapes and squish them for a little bit. And that is going to give you that sensation of um, a squeezing candy and because you also have the sugar of the um, the sweetness and the sugar of the um, of the fruit. Okay. Making smart goals. What is doing um, making smart goals? So it stands for smart as specific means to be clarity, have, um, have defined clarity, measurable, be able to be measured. You need numbers. You need um, how many days I'm going to be following this. Attainable, you want something that is achievable or within reach. Relevant, appropriate, or applicable. And then 
time base. You need to give yourself a due date. So I'm going to play another video for you that is going to help you to understand um, better how you can take um, and make a smart goals, set up a smart, a smart goals. Goal setting is a powerful tool in increasing productivity. In fact, setting goals can increase your productivity by 11 to 25%. But actually setting and working towards goals can be challenging. So let's get smart about goals. S, specific. Ask yourself what you want to accomplish. And most importantly, why? M, make it measurable. Are you able to tell when you've reached your goal? A, attainable. Goals should stretch you so you feel excited, but within your current ability. R, relevant. Set goals that are going to positively impact your life. Does this goal fit in with your other life's goals and dreams? T, time-based. A goal with a time deadline will create a sense of urgency and give you the energy you need to complete it. Finally, once you achieve your goal, it's time to celebrate and set the next goal. So here are some examples of a SMART goals. Setting a goal, just a plain goal will be like, I will make a healthy swaps for ingredients. It's a good goal, but a SMART goal will be, I will do meatless Monday, swapping for meat, swapping meat for healthy plant-based ingredients. Or you can make like a taco Tuesday, but instead of using the normal taco shell, you can use, um, crispy lettuce, uh, such as the, um, instead, of, instead of the taco shell. So every step counts. In here we see that you need to be specific. What can I do to accomplish? Um, you need to, um, or what do I want to accomplish? Uh, so if your goal is to eat healthier, just write it down. I want to eat more vegetables, more fresh food, um, and less um, canned food, less um, fatty food. Write it down. The second one will be, um, the next step will be measurable. How many days a week are you going to do this? Three days a week, two days a week, um, as many as are um, attainable for you. Um, so for instance, that moves us to step number three, attainable. How can, can this goal be met? Um, if I'm going to be cooking three times a week, I need to have the proper ingredients to have that. So I'm going to make sure that I have in my pantry all the food that is needed in order for me to have um, healthier options to prepare. And step four, is relevant. Is this goal going to help me to reach in the long-term goals? Yes, because you're actually um, doing every step so you can get the long-term goal, which is to um, have a, a healthy lifestyle. And time um, step number five is time-based. Um, what will do this? Um, when will this uh, goal be met? you want a whole week or maybe um, I'm going to do, I'm going to be cooking three times a week um, for two weeks. So you have to settle your, um, your, your time, your, your due date. And then those, all those little steps are going to add up and they're going to take you to your final goal. If you have any questions, you can uh, leave, uh, you can write them in the comment section and just um, feel free to ask any questions and then uh, we will answer you. Thank you.
thank you so much for your time and for your um be being with me along the whole presentation thank you have a good one <laughs>